Dear students, let us start the discussion on today's newspaper that is 26 September 2016. The first article is related to the education and the report of OECD and UNESCO in this case. Now if you take the OECD report that is education at a glance 2016, it clearly exposes the gaps in the global education scenario. Now you know that uh, the sustainable development goal, it talks about achieving the education for all. So in these circumstances, elimination of poverty, gender justice, all these are intricately connected with the goal of the education. So in this, uh, as per the demand for the higher education, it has increased across the globe and it has got uh, discrete connectedness with them. Um, the wages which are earned by the employees and the average salaries and also livelihood standards, taxes paid by them to the government, everything is going to increase. So it means that so the people are interested, the public are interested to pursue the higher education which raises their standard of living. But however if you see the public investment in the higher education it is actually decreasing and out of the pocket expenditure is increasing. More than 30% of the educational expenditure has to be borne by the people out of their pocket. So in this scenario, the UNESCO report also shows this dismal state of public expenditure on education. So it is the time the world has to see that uh, the value of education in improving the livelihoods um, and achievement of the developmental goals are also dependent on the education as education is necessary for uh, intergenerational poverty removal. So that has to be strived for. Coming to the Pakistan, now you have seen the inconsistency in Indian policy from Patan court to Pimpo to the Uri. So India is vocal at times and India is silent at the other times. India has conducted the talks and suspended the talks. It means there is no consistency with regard to the Indian approach in dealing with Pakistan. So in this scenario, the author argues that the military action against the Pakistan is very limited. And the military victory can be achieved against the Pakistan, but at what cost to India? Because India is at a growing stage and the markets in India are improving and investments are flowing into this country. At this point of time, India's focus on the military, military fight with Pakistan will unnecessarily deviate its goals and focus. So in this scenario, let us see. India's inconsistent policy and Pakistan inability to keep promises which made to international community against terrorism, these are the twin challenges. So there are various approaches which have been given by the author. The first one is the military solution is not on the cards if we take the developmental stage into consideration. The diplomacy has to take the high seat. But however, in the diplomacy, Pakistan inconsistency is the major challenge. So, India has to ensure that um, the diplomacy need to be uh, properly articulated um, and Pakistan shall be seen as an irritant in the grand strategy and the strategy shall not fo focus on the Pakistan itself. Um, Pakistan is the nation through which um, the China and many other countries are trying to fire against India. So that's why the Pakistan is a small nation or irritant and India has to focus on the grand strategy with regard to the dealing of global affairs. And the second in Pakistan, there are multiple power centers. One is the civilian government, the other one is military government. India-centric policy of the Pakistan, it is in the hands of the military government and military's very existence lies in proving itself to be standing to the Indian army. So in these circumstances, India is not negotiating with the military. So India has to develop a discrete negotiation mechanism with the Pakistani army. But however, it has to be a back channel negotiation because if the military gets strengthened, it will threaten the civilian government further in Pakistan. And coming to the third thing, the URI attacks, if you see, these are happening when Kashmiri agitation is growing on. The intention of the Pakistan is very clear over here. It is to expose the international community, the Pakistan, the Kashmiri violence and action of the Indian state. So, taking the Indian Kashmir or taking the Kashmiri people and gaining the peace in the Kashmir is of utmost importance for India. And if you take the Adda Shastra, it has been clearly said that
a king who takes the people along with him who has the support of his subjects he can do anything and everything so having the support of one's own people is very critical to win the war against the pakistan so these are the things which we need to do against pakistan now finally a deal has been signed with regard to the rafale jets from france now multimodal multimodal air fighter aircrafts uh, india has called for a tender but prime minister has finally made it as a government to government deal and a direct purchase from the france uh, because of this the huge amount of the money is saved for government of india but if you take this uh, the france jets uh, these are the state of the art jets uh, and they have missiles coming within the package uh, so beyond visual range air to air defense missile with a range of 150 uh, kilometers uh, and then uh, air to ground missiles with a range of 300 kilometers uh, these are the two sets which are coming with it and these are nowhere uh, uh, exists in this particular part of the region and added to that um, till now we are using mirage 2000 as the nuclear uh, capable aircrafts or jets um, the mirage 2000 their lifetime is about to end so these rafale can replace the mirage aircrafts as the credible nuclear carriers some which are necessary for the second strike capability of india but there is a catch over here now india still now is majorly dependent on the russian jets and it is also is it developing a fifth generation fighter jet along with russia so in this scenario the french jets and indian tejas all make the composition a bit complex so maintaining the logistics achieving the economies of skills is not possible when diverse sets of the jets exist for india so india has to procure its weapons based on the long term integrated plan that is what is the suggestion we can give now coming to photocopy now you know that the copyright act of india 1957 it provides for the protection of the copyrights of the individuals from commercial exploitation by the others so in this context the recent judgment of the high court of delhi in the chancellor masters and scholars of university of oxford versus uh, the rameshwari jirok photocopy shop in uh, uh, new delhi university so in this case what it has said is um, so there are certain exceptions and there is a fair deal has to be ensured between the right to dissemination of knowledge and uh, the rights of the copyright owner a fair deal has to be struck but what is this fair deal was not clearly explained and judiciary has made interpretations of it in a case to case basis so if you take the copyright act the section 521i it clearly states that the section 521i clearly states that the reproduction of any work by a teacher or a pupil in the course of instruction will not be seen as a copyright infringement so the rameshwari photocopy shop is using this provision and it is making the textbooks reproducing the textbooks in bundles together and selling it to the students so what the high court said is in the course of instruction if you take this phrase into consideration the teacher preparation of the notes students using this notes for their course structure or for their studies everything do not will not be covered by the copyright act now here there is a glitch so it means um, a student or a teacher is allowed to produce only an excerpt or some part of the textbook or he can take um, a photocopy of the entire textbook which is prescribed in the duke in the course of the uh, study for the student is not been made clear by the high court so the rights of the copyright owner and the dissemination of the knowledge so in between these two is it fair deal is stuck by the delhi high court or not is the major question over here because the copyright of protection is also an important element in the generation and dissemination of knowledge now coming to china pakistan economic corridor so it is spreading from xinjiang province kashgar in xinjiang province to gwadar in balochistan in pakistan now the balochistan issue was internationalized by india and india is trying to expose the human rights violations and the freedom movement in balochistan so the china pakistan economic corridor it is very critical for the china's one belt one road initiative in connecting the eurasia's mainland and along with this economic corridor china also wants to develop a series of ports and it is also going to bypass china's dependence on malacca straits which are where the america has its dominance so in this scenario 
the chain of wants the the, the last thing the chain of wants on the chain of pakistan economic corridor is any disturbance or violence so the raising of the protests in kashmir and uh, india talking about pok gilgit baltistan and baluchistan is the major reason for the chain arm so in this context um, it is the china expects the peace to prevail in kashmir and baluchistan regions um, for its own interests now paris climate change you know that india has announced its um, intended nationally determined contributions indc said paris conference that is to reduce the energy intensity by 33 to 35 percent uh, based on 2005 levels so in this context uh, india has to ratify the paris agreement the paris agreement will come into operation only if 55 countries that contribute to the 55% of the total gas emissions ratify the agreement india contributes to the 6% of the global greenhouse gas emissions and india's ratification will, will add weight to the paris climate change negotiations or paris climate change pact but in the process india tried to link ratification of the paris pact with india's entry into nsg but however now it is made clear that both of them will be independently pursued and there is no trade off between these two now coming to disparity between the states growing now remember these two points in india the poverty reduction is high among the rich states compared to the poor states and the gdp growth is less the gdp intensity to decrease the poverty is also less among the weaker states or else among the poorer states so the disparities among the states is increasing that is what is the research by economic and political weekly talks about so lack of proper public service delivery mechanisms and governance these are the twin problems of these weak states and coming to 1991 reforms Mr Sanjay Bharu he was the, the journalist at that point of time he explains that at the Nehruvian era there is a tradition of consensual decision making it means engagement with the different stakeholders politicians and regions towards achieving for a, a national decision or decision of the union government now indira gandhi style of functioning is mostly unilateral the same is the case with the rajiv gandhi style of functioning but however the nehruvian consensus style was revived by the pv narasimha rao and it is the reason for the success of the economic reforms if the pv narasimha rao era has to be remembered one is for economic reforms due to the second is to take a turn on the diplomatic reform a diplomatic uh, uh, cycle and the third one is um, you is ability to take forward the um, consensus based decision making in the congress party in spite of the difficulties which he had these are the three things you can remember the pavinar simarao's legacy for so these are the articles for today thank you very much all the best